Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Grand Edge, the show where we talk about specific decks and very interesting decks to play around with. We're closing off the season almost in a few days. The season will be wrapped up. A bit of a shorter season and we didn't get any changes in the game aside from the introduction of Maddox. So uh, that means that we're still stuck with the same meta, but today we're going to be talking about a monster deck that doesn't use V. Because uh, today we're going to be looking at the Sensual Deadwish deck. So you might already derive this from the name, but the Sensual Deadwish deck is focusing on, of course, Deadwish abilities. But on top of that, we're going to be focusing on Succubi. So the Succubus card that has been introduced is a very interesting card. To me, it's like a bronze version of Ruin, but... Um, Something that requires a copy of that unit already in the graveyard for the same effect. And yeah, otherwise it actually functions exactly the same. So there's no real reason to have Ruin anymore. Because Ruin, I mean, has the same function, but can, uh, yeah, it costs a lot more to introduce in your deck. So let's go through the deck one by one and I'll show you what this is all about. So first up, of course, we need some Deadwish units. So we have the Night Rate that spawns two rats when she's played and also when she dies. Then we have the Foglets who uh, summon their copies from the deck when they die. Spores are included because uh, the biggest downside to this deck, I think the biggest counter to this deck, is uh, something like K here or very high boosting cards like Colgrim. Um, that's why this resetter is here. That's also why we're including Geralt Erden because I feel like that's one of the best counters against decks like that. So even Northern Realms Witches uh, might benefit from, uh, well, if you're facing them, it might benefit you to have a Geralt Erden in your deck. Then of course the Andrega Larva, double up on Thrive and just have a lot of points uh, potential in your hand. Then of course the Succubus, this is what it's all about. So the Succubus is a beast, there's a lot of beasts in this deck as well, um, because that's also one of the teams I wanted to kind of go for. Um, but the Succubus, when she dies at the end of your turn, if there is another Succubus in the graveyard, summon yourself from your graveyard to a random row and gain Doomed. And at Adrenaline Tree, you do not gain Doomed. So if you're at Adrenaline Tree, you can keep destroying the Succubus and it will come back at the end of your turn back to the board. So basically the same effect as Ruin, aside from the fact that you need Adrenaline Tree to not lose them in the next turn. Because of course, because of Doomed, it will not trigger if she was Doomed when the effect happens. Then of Grand Warriors is another beast but gains a point whenever you destroy a unit during your turn that counts for as well opposing units as your own so keep that in mind might be very very effective when you're using something like the were cat on a uh, swarm deck then the chimera chimera is very interesting i've used two chimeras instead of the bargas which is also definitely an option but on deploy you consume an allied unit and if you have only four cards left in your hand at that point. You boost all copies of the consumed unit on that same row by one. So for example, with the rats, because that's what we're going to go for here, uh, you're going to get a lot of extra points from all of the rats on that same row. Then one purifier with the Nagelfire's Taskmaster is going to come in handy against the uh, plenty of Nilfgaardian decks that we're facing. Predatory Dive is something that people don't really um, expect anymore in a monster deck. So it's very handy to destroy that first unit that your opponent plays if you don't have anything on the board anymore. Uh, after that it starts losing value but very very good opening play if you uh, do not start. So if you're on red coin. Then Werecat, we talked about that a little bit. So has Thrive on deploy damages all enemy units on the opposing row by one. And when it dies, that happens again. So you could play it on a row and then destroy it immediately to get two points of damage on the that entire opposite row. Very handy against that wish, uh, not that wish deck. Dex, this is a that wish deck, but on a swarm deck. Uh, if you have a Vron Warrior on the field at that same time, you get the points of the Werecat being destroyed and then of course everything you destroy on the opposing row. So it could be very, very powerful. Something that a Vron Warrior also benefits from is the Were Rat itself. So uh, at the end of your turn, it always consumes the unit to the right of it. So you could set this up to be an automatic consumer that kills off the Deadwish units that you play in the same uh, turn without having to have a manual consumer on the field or using one of your overwhelming hunger charges. 
but in the next turn you can use its order ability to reset this unit's power and then spawn a, an equal amount of rats on that row. Um, you can do that every turn, so if you consume something you can transform that value into rats. And of course that gels very well with Chimera as we talked about before, but also gives your rare rat continuous um, just units to destroy. And if you have the Vran Warrior on the field as well, you just generate points automatically. One of the very few ways to generate points automatically in monsters decks. Um, of course you could also include the Beast if you want to have more of that. But then we have the Imperial Manticore, again something that people don't really expect anymore. So if you destroy the Manticore, you destroy the lowest enemy on the other side of the board, which could be very handy as well. Then of course we have all those Death Wish units, we want to be able to consume them. So Kron is very very handy to play in the last few turns, so you can destroy your Succubuses, your Succubi I should say, uh, at the end of your turn every time. So you could get those four points back continuously. Doldulok is a very peculiar location card, so it doesn't really give you the points that you get from the other location cards, but you spawn, you can use it to spawn another succubus, which is what I usually use it for. If I don't use a succubus, I mostly go for a chimera to get the points. But on order, you move the highest power unit to the top of your deck and you spawn a drone on both sides of this card. It doesn't really happen too often that I'm able to use this, but regardless, it's a good way to use this in, uh, for example, round one and round two, so you can get that good card at the uh, final round. Then the Whispering Hillock, of course, we want to be able to have a little bit of tutoring for our Deathwish units, so that's what the Whispering Hillock is very good at. And then we get to our very strong card, so Maruna, another uh, succubus, but for some reason not marked as a beast. So the succubi are marked as beast, Miruna is marked as a relic, so that's a bit weird. And also the reason why I didn't really uh, include more of it, but you could definitely, if you want to swap around the deck a little bit, include more of it to have those uh, points on the rats as well if you're lucky. But I didn't really pull it off all that often with the rats, so it's probably better uh, this way. Then we have, uh, well, Maruna, I kind of forgot about her ability, but Maruna seizes a random enemy power with 4 power or less when she is destroyed. You can do that again if you want to, if you use Karanti. So Karanti spawns a 1 power base copy of a monster unit from your hand in this row. You can use this for 3 cards, I think. Um, so either for Maruna, Deadlove or one of the Succubi. You could technically also use it on Kron if you want to have 3 more consumes with a very low starting base power. Um, and that could very well be a, a, a valid play as well if you have a lot of succubi on the field because that actually gives you all the more consume options to get those four points going continuously and i think that gives you so if you count the points from the succubi you get three consumes so that's 12 points 13 points on kron and four points on karantir so that's um 18 points if you want to go for uh, 13 no 17 points if you want to go for it if you use Garanti with Deadlove, you get um, 9 points out of that, so that's 13 points with Garanti. And Miruna is basically the same. You get uh, a 1 power, and then double 4 is also 9, and you get 13 points. So Deadlove, while we're talking about him, he has a Death Wish ability that allows you to destroy him, and he immediately gets summoned back to the same row. And you can do that two times, so you can use him to get 15 points, basically. Uh, also a very good way to end off a short third round if you ever need to. As I said before, we also use Geralt Erden to just reset an entire row, which is very, very handy in this meta. And then in a Death Wish deck, I don't think you can go without Monsters scenario, so Haunt. Uh, whenever you play a Death Wish unit, this thing is progressed. Um, first time you spawn a Desert Banshee in this row, which allows you to uh, consume something and just boost itself by one every time you play a Death Wish unit. Then you spawn and play a Bargast, as two consumes if you have Dominance. And then the final play is the Night Raid again, so the Ratty Ratty Lady. Uh, we also have the Magic Lamp, just to give us another unit that we could technically consume. And then Overwhelming Hunger, of course, gives us three uh, charges of us being able to destroy a unit and spawn an Ekimara on the same row with the added boost of the power of the unit that you destroyed. 
Um, one thing to note with Overwhelming Hunger is that if you use it on a full row, the Akimara will not spawn. I think this is kind of a bug, because of course the description clearly states that you destroy an allied unit first, so that space should be available for the Akimara to spawn, but for some reason the game doesn't do that. So keep that in mind if you want to use that on uh, one of those rows that you filled with rats. But with that said, let's dive into an example match to see how this works in practice. And of course, in this meta, it's no surprise that we're facing Nilfgaard. But let's see how this is going to work out. Because Nilfgaard is usually one side or the other. Um, it is an enslaved deck, so we're going to be working with a lot of tactic cards. Um, but of course, a lot of opportunities to grab stuff as well for ourselves with Maruna, I think. I don't really need the resetter, so the spores aren't going to be that useful. We do need as many of the succubuses, the succubi that we could use. I'm going to keep the purify, I'm probably going to get rid of one of the Vran warriors, and then that seems like a pretty good starting play. I'm actually going to even remove the succubus here, because we have another one if we need to, and we get Urden. Erden is not going to be that useful, but uh, let's start with the classic play and play the Andrega Larva. And immediately play the Magic Lamp as well, just to counter any Sandstorms that would be in the deck. But I don't think there would be any in the deck. So we get a Magna Division as a starting point. It gets put on that row, so we technically could grab it with Maruna. Uh, but not something that I really need to do right now. I think I'm going to keep Maruna for the final round, because she's more useful that way. Um, let's put the Vran Warrior um, over here, so he doesn't really get assassinated there. He could still get hit, but right now doesn't really seem like that much of a problem. He could get grabbed with the Enslave. It's probably Enslave... Enslave 7? What? Enslave 7? Is that even a thing? Um... I didn't really realize that was a thing. Enslave 7. That is interesting. Um, I'm gonna play the Night Raid now. That gives us a bit of drive and a lot of spreading because we don't want to really use big targets here. The, um, okay, we got coated weapons. Ooh, do we get, is it still like Filgard then? But that doesn't really gel with the tactics too well, does it? Um, I think Were Rat is actually not going to be that useful right now. I could... I don't have Dominance anymore. Should have used the Taskmaster earlier, but I guess I won't be using him then. Um, other than that, I could use the Were Rat. Yeah, let's use the Were Rat over here. Because that's where the... Well, the overwhelming majority of units of our opponent is going to be placed. I could still use Maruna to grab something, but I think it's probably better to use the location card next. Um, and maybe even destroy the nitrate in the process. So our opponent is taking their sweet time. And we get War Council. So top three cards, we get a Seize on the Werecats. But that gets boosted up to five. Oh no, it doesn't. Oh, I could try and get that back now. I could get lucky. Usually I don't. Um, but we could use Maruna with... Yeah, let's try that. So let's use Maruna with overwhelming hunger and then see if we can get our yeah we get a wear wrap back that is a-okay <laughs> is that a jest friend no it's not friend so you could probably they could probably do use another amnesty if they wanted to but they might not have another one which would work to my advantage and i can still use the location card now to see if they wanna do something with that but I don't think they will I think we kind of have the advantage here we're 17 points ahead they get two points with the magna division we get another coated weapons but that's not going to be enough what is that going to be used on the nitrate but we get oh no it's banished so we don't get the extra points I'm going to pass now 
were 13 points, well, 12 points with another Magnet Division ping ahead. I will. I don't think I will. So let's just shut that down. And we could use the location card. Yeah, we're not going to get the full benefit from the location card anymore because we're not going to get our highest card back. But not that much of a problem. I mean, even though our opponent has been trying to fill our deck, our deck is less filled than theirs is. Which is interesting. Did they... Wait, how is... How does that... How did that happen? So I got... How the hell did they get 18 cards in... Oh! Oh, that's how they got Enslave 7. That's how they got Enslave 7. That is interesting. So they got Enslave 7 because they overspent on their deck. So their deck started with a lot more points than... Uh, than they should have. That is very interesting. That also means that they probably don't have a good way of getting the right cards in hand. So they use their leading ability, but that's not that good of an idea, I think. Okay, so this is actually a pretty good hand if I wanted to go just slowly, but let's just do this. Mm. I would love to get either the Manticore or uh, Predatory Dive because I'm pretty sure we're going to get Damien to reset their leader ability. I'm going to remove the Taskmaster and we get Predatory Dive. Okay, that's really good. Because if we now get Damien at a certain point, we could get rid of that. Uh, or we could even just get rid of that. Indeed. Um, yeah, let's just use Predatory Dive now. Um, jo although Johnny will get boosted. So if our opponent actually is planning to use um, Damien after this, I should probably keep the Predatory Dive until we get a good shot at it. So let's just use the Andrega Larva first. We'll use the Foglets after this. And then we still have a few options to... Uh, take full advantage of Haunt if it ever comes to this. So play the lowest units. Okay, we get Fion. And battle preparation. But yeah, Johnny... Yeah, I kind of forgot about this. Johnny doesn't boost. It's the, the damaging one. Okay, that is fine. I could... Yeah, I'll just use the Foglet now. I have plenty of ways to get a lot of points to just get rid of his uh, advantage there. But for now, I don't really need to overplay. We might actually get... Okay, so the Amnesty will take our Andrega Larva. Um, but then, of course, we have the Were Rats. Um, the Were Rat will consume the Foglet and spawn the copy of it. So that's what those automatic consumes are really handy for. Uh, we might get an assassination now. Okay, we get Damien. We need no help from I think I'll just use... I'm not going to use the order ability on the wear rat just yet. Because if we get a boost from killing the... Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Because if we... Yeah, so let's use Haunt. Because we really, really need to overplay this now. Um, let's use Haunt first. Spawn that one. We use the Were Rats ability to spawn two more rats. And then we consume the Foglets. And that means that if they want to grab the Were Rat with their leader ability again, they will be able to. They won't be able to grab the Were Rat or they need to damage it first. And they don't. So that's battle preparation. Um, and it grabs the rats. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is play a Death Wish unit. It is going to be Deathloft. So let's play Deathloft. Put him over here right next to the Were Rat. The Were Rat is gonna consume it. I don't need to consume it with the Bargast. So I'll just use the Bargast to grab the, um, the rat there. And then spawn four more rats with the ability. And we'll get enough points to go over him or over our opponent again with the destruction of that loft. There we go. And we wanted to have that happen in that order. So that loft doesn't... They could grab that loft now. But that's only five points. Well, they could get seven. They could grab the bar guests. 
But they use Turning Joust on the Wear Rat, and then they're gonna grab the Wear Rat. Yeah, okay. Um, I could still use Predatory Dive, uh, but I could reset that entire row if I wanted to. So that's not gonna be a problem. Um, let's use Dol du Lok now and play that Succubus that I wanted to play. There we go. Let's use the Night Raid over here. And then we can use the Desert Banshee to grab um, that lav, And use the Bargas to destroy the Night Raid. So that gives us a bunch of rats. Still seven, well, six points ahead. And we still have the Resetter if we need to. They're gonna use the, the ability, that is fine. And then they use Treason, and Treason is going to destroy the bar guest. No, not the bar guest. Okay, so that's not a problem at all. I could use Predatory Dive, but it's not going to be that useful. I'm going to use the uh, Dol du Lok, so we do get our strongest card back. And then I'm going to use Erden on the top row, and that will remove all of those points and give us even card advantage. There we go. Not a problem at all. Erden is... In this deck exactly for that reason because we want to get rid of those points so next round we do need to start and we start with ooh, double resetter but let's get rid of the spores ah and that is actually perfect i don't need multiple consumes anymore so i think i'm gonna just get rid of kron and we get garantier Garantir. I think Garantir on... Yeah, Garantir on the Night Raid. So that gives us no um, no rats, but we have Predatory Dive. So if we Predatory Dive the first unit that our opponent plays, so they get bribery, but that's not going to help unless it's something that I really don't want to destroy, then it's going to be annoying. And we get Kron. That is perfect. So there we go. Because they, they're not expecting the predatory dive at this point. So they have three consumes, but they won't be able to do anything with that. There we go. And that gives us two more rats. And we still have two overwhelming hunger charges, so we're going to be using those in a minute. We get Imperial Diplomacy. That's going to be a bronze card from our um, starting... Ooh, yeah, even the hybrid. So only four... Four power and a boost on every consume, but they don't have the consumes from Kron anymore. And we get the Orphids. There we go. And that's how you use this deck. I didn't really get to use the Succubi all that well. So let's let's do one more in hopes that I can actually show that off this time. Okay, and that sounds that uh, our second match is another monster deck. So that is, of course, annoying, because if we face Vi, then we don't really have... Yeah, the option to uh, to win this, I'm assuming. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, there's still plenty of options that we could use uh, to our advantage here. We have to succubi immediately. That's not really too useful. I'm going to get rid of one of them. The nitrate can go as well. We get that laugh. Uh, plenty of consumes. And I don't think we'll need to purify against monsters. So that is pretty okay. So let's just start with the Andrega Larva. And I don't need any defense this time because it would be very weird if our opponent actually has something like Sandstorm to counter that. So we get an Andrega Larva in return. Fair enough. Next up is going to be the Vran Warrior. So we're going to be putting that down over here. I might as well already grab the magic lamp and get those five points going as well. So easy going against monsters uh, at the beginning usually. So let's get the... Okay, we get a Bruxa. That's a, just a little bit of bleeding. Could have used that um, purifier of the Nagelfar Taskmaster first then. But nevertheless, we're still fine right now. I would have liked uh, Garanti here because that seems like the better matchup. But uh, let's get Kron over here and grab the uh, 
Lampchen, so we don't lose those two points to bleeding. Seems like the better option here. Uh, we get the extra points from the Vran Warrior. K1 is going to be less useful now that we still have Overwhelming Hunger. That's not a lockdown deck. So we have the charges if we need them. And then we get the Beast. The Beast is going to go to 6 immediately. Now that the Andrega Larva is the only unit with 4 power, we might actually just grab that. Yeah, let's just put Maruna down. And grab that as well. And there we go. That's our Andrega Larva. And then I think I'm going to have to pass off to this. If it's a V deck, oh, we get just get the Foglets now. The Foglets is going to be 8 points right now. They get 2 points from the Beast every time, so they need to play 11 points to get over that. I don't really have high-powered units anymore, which is a bit of a downside to this deck. So we have kind of the Tribe, but not the benefit of the Tribe too, well, too much of the time. We could still play Deadlock, but then we just played our best cards first so i think i'm just gonna pass i still need to play uh 11 points well not even because the beast is gonna trigger twice right yeah he's gonna trigger twice so they need to play nine points which is very doable in a monster deck i'm assuming and that is not enough so yeah they need to play v but v of course yeah v is v and there we have our first v that is annoying that is really annoying knowing that's a V deck. Because of course this is a weaker version of the V deck. But you know me, I don't want to play meta decks. Um, I want to play something original and cool. And not something boring like playing the same deck that everybody's been playing. Predatory Dive is probably the most useful here. So I'll leave the Chimera out of this. We get Doldu Lok, which is actually pretty good in this case. Uh, meaning that we also don't really need the... Um, Chimera here. And we get Spores. Spores is also pretty good. So Iwaraquax, that's gonna pull, I don't know, with a Karantir? Probably. Oh no, Erden. Yeah, that's gonna pull Erden. Yeah, okay, I think I've lost beforehand now. But yeah, this is gonna keep going, so also double cross. Grabs another V. V is going to get consumed by, you know, either the Bargast or the Desert Banshee. Then we get another Night Raid. I'm going to have to play my own Haunt now. So there we go. The Desert Banshee, I think, is the highest one to... Oh, crap, and we got rats now. So the yeah, Predatory Dive isn't really going to do anything anymore. So let's play Haunt. And then next up, we can consume a whole lot. Depends on if our yeah, opponent is just going to push. I mean, it's fine if they really want to push, but they have on Aeromancy now, so they're going to grab a 23 points V at this point. So there we go. It gets destroyed and we get all of that. Next up, so at least I can show off the Succubus combo. So let's play the Succubus. It's not the and then we can grab that same Succubus with the Bargast. We're not going to get a second consume on the Bargus because, of course, there's uh, three 20 plus units on the board. Uh, but at least we're going to grab um, the other Succubus with the Desert Banshee. We get another Destroy on that. And that's about it. And those two Succubi are going to... Uh, only one because, of course, there wasn't one in the graveyard. And then we get a pass. Which is, yeah, very smart to do, because I need to do a hell of a lot if I want to get on top of this. Predatory Dive is useless. Um, we might just get out of this. I'm not entirely sure, so we get this. That's going to fill up the row a little bit. Um, does this actually work? Because I've now played them on the same row. I, should, I don't know if this actually does anything properly here. And we got that, that's good. We can consume it again because of course then the uh, the row is going to fill up. Um, but we can grab this again. And end it like that. That gives us 66. And then the spores are going to be enough. The spores are probably going to be best on the Desert Fancy. That's 21 points, so there we go. And we don't have enough. 
So I need to use my final overwhelming hunger charge on that. Okay. There we go. So we at least won the rounds. As you can see, the, the succubus actually does a really good job of staying on top of things, even against the overwhelming power of V. Yeah, and the final two cards are Royal Decree and Onairomat, so that's 50 points in one go. So yeah, no need to talk about this any further, let's just uh, skip. So let's just say that that second match was a good showcase of how to use the succubi to your advantage. But uh, against V, yeah, you can't really do anything uh, if you're just playing monsters. Because um, there's, there's actually very little options you have against V. Uh, I think the only thing that you really could try and do is play an elf card and grab it out of the deck. Or just pull it with Ihara Quax and then imposter it. But yeah, it's 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 bullshit. I'm hoping that gets actually changed in the next patch because uh, V is so oppressive that you can't really do anything against. But even then, we managed to uh, get um, over those overwhelming ults, so that was actually pretty nice. And we won our first round against Nilfgaard, so that was also a very good showcase of how good this deck actually is. Because it's, I've been playing with this deck for a while now, and it is really good. The problem is, is that. In monsters, V is too oppressive, so you can't really do anything against. And as a reaction to that, you get faced with a lot of Nilfgaard, which is just adept at locking and cock blocking everything in its path. So that's why it feels like this deck might not be good, but it is very, very good. So one more time, Haunt, very powerful. But other than that, this is the sensual Death Wish deck. So the Succubi are the main draw here, along with the Beast. You could add more of it if you want to just boost all beasts. There are a lot of beasts in this deck, so uh, there is a variation to this where you could use more of it um in exchange for something like uh, i don't know you could actually remove kyanti if you wanted to um and just get more of it in here to get a little more a little bit more raw power uh raw points in this deck but other than that um yeah it's just a really fun deck to play with and it's something else than what everybody's playing in the meta which is always what i'm trying to aim for and it's I feel like it's still viable. Um, so uh, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Because that was it for today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, episode of Grand Edge where we talked about the sensual deck wish deck. Um, if you have any tips or feedback on this deck that you want to share with everybody else, just let us know. And because uh, that's what we're here for after all, just helping each other out. So thank you guys enormously for watching and hope to see you in the next episode, hopefully in a more varied batch um, yeah, of Grand Edge. So thank you enormously for watching and goodbye. Stay nutty.